Hello everybody, Kaiser here. Uh, welcome to my run through of the second of three kind of episodic installations of the uh, Dark Souls 2 DLC. Uh, this is the Crown of the Iron King, that's right. Crown of the Old Iron King maybe? I don't know. There's an iron and there's king involved, not sure if he's old. But anyway, this is my character, um, different one to last time, this is kind of a... Uh, I guess you'd call him a spell sword. I've just uh, pumped intelligence, <clears throat> so I get all that uh, kind of magic scaling damage. Um, with the latest patch that came with this DLC, they actually nerfed the damage of spells as well, particularly uh, Soul Spear. They really nerfed the amount of casts it has, so um, being a pure caster, you can't decimate things as easily anymore. So that's why I've got, uh, I think this is the, yeah, the Watcher Greatsword. So it basically does. Uh, magic and physical damage, and it scales really well with uh, magic damage. So that's kind of what we got going. Um, yeah, <laughs> fairly light armor. I've uh, got Flynn's ring there, so we can uh, just basically get as much bonus damage as possible. A little bit of a glass cannon this build. Uh, I've tried to put a fair amount. I think I've got about 20 vitality. So we've got an all right amount of health. Uh, for armor, I think I've got the Drake Blood stuff on, so our defense is eh, okay. Basically, we can deal a lot of damage, but we can't really take that much. So, this is how you get to the uh, the DLC first. So, Forbidden is the past in the Ancient King's Domain. Alrighty. With water dry and path amiss, woeful temptation is dismissed. Cryptic. And the Tower of the Old Iron King resides a Child of Dark. Okay, well that confirms what uh, the community was kind of uh, speculating with um, the whole kind of Dark Queens like Nishandra, Alana, and... Uh, I guess whoever's going to be in this tower, or this DLC, I should say. Alrighty, we got the shrine sort of area. Ah, uh, yep, and we got the door. Now, what's over at the side here? Oh, more of these things. Um, so that uh, I think people who don't, who haven't bought the DLC, can still kind of help players who do help do have the uh, DLC. I think that's how it works. Okay. Big iron door. I think, uh, actually, the kind of carvings on this door are the same as the ones on the door to uh, the Sunken King DLC. I don't think they're different. Alright. So, um, I know one thing that uh, Varty actually brought up when he was talking about this DLC was that whereas Crown of the Sunken King focused kind of on level design and bringing back... Um, kind of the level design from Dark Souls 1, how everything kind of loops back in on itself, It's uh, and it's very dense, uh, and it kind of has, um, you know, lots of traps and stuff. This DLC focuses more on difficulty. Here we go. This is pretty awesome, like um, the vision you're confronted with when you come through that fog gate. Really atmospheric, really cool. Got this, these giant towers, we're up really high, this kind of wind blowing blowing up, it's an ash around. That's actually, yeah, that's not snow, that's ash, like from a volcano. And it looks like the only way we have to go is up. Oop. Not an ambush, okay. Huh. These are uh, royal soldiers of the Drang Lake army. I won't go too much into the lore, because I know Spy and Varty go into it in way more detail, so I won't just rehash what they say. And there we picked up uh, smelter wedges, and I had no idea what these did. I thought they were maybe a thrown item or something when I first picked these up, so we'll look at the item description. And we, um, we kind of start piecing together that uh, the child of dark... Uh... Oh god, I can't even remember her name. Um, it's not Natasha. <laughs> oh, whatever her name is. <coughs> I'm sure you guys could have read it in the description, or you'd already know, or you don't care. But anyway, this uh, this big rusty chain here is pretty cool. It's uh, quite evocative, I thought, of the uh, the bridge you have to go across to get to the Dragon Shrine. But luckily, nothing comes and tries to attack you. And that item to the left over there, um, you can't get it until you kind of activate all these lifts. But it's actually a really cool ring that helps with blocking. And I don't think I. Uh, have footage of me picking it up, but I do it on like another character. But yeah, you can't get it yet. 
not until we activate all the contraptions in this tower. So, we, looks like we can either roll down there, and get some items, or we can go this way. And, oh my god, what the fuck is that thing? Yep, attacking it does nothing. It seems to uh, cast kind of a firestorm, but I suppose um, it's infused with dark. And I'm pretty sure everyone um, kind of had this what the fuck moment when they came across this thing. Because it's not immediately obvious what it does. It kind of looks like the um, the ashen thing we saw at the uh, the start of the DLC, the one that crumbled when we picked up these smelter wedges. And here I'm thinking maybe you throw them, but you can't actually use them as sort of a consumable item. So I've kind of figured out that somehow the smelter wedges interact with this thing, and that's what you've got to do. Run up to it and just, you know, activate it. You plunge the smelter wedge into it, and it dies. And then... Nadalia, that was her name. I knew it was... Nah, something or other. But yeah, um, this is another weird thing. You think, like, what? We get the boss soul already at the very start of the DLC? It is only a fragment of her soul, and I think there are 12 in total before uh, they kind of all merge into the full soul. I think um, I've only ever been able to find 11, I think, of these soul fragments, so I've missed one of those uh, Ashen Idols, that's what they're called. I've missed one of those somewhere on um, another character. But then again, I haven't really watched a full kind of walkthrough of this DLC, so I'm not totally sure where everything is. So it looks like we've got a few paths we could go through, and um, I'm sorry I didn't point it out before, but that throne over there is the throne of the Old Iron King. That's where uh, Mr. Lava Man used to sit. And here we go, walking down further into the tower. It's quite confusing at first, this DLC, because there's so many different paths you can go. It's not like uh, the Sunken King, where it's, despite being quite dense level design, it's also fairly linear. Here it's like, oh my god, it looks like there's a few different paths. And you don't want to, uh... You're a bit wary of dropping down, because as you know in Dark Souls, you know, if you drop down somewhere, usually it's quite hard to get back up to where you drop down from. So you're like, oh, I don't want to miss anything. And here we have all these, uh... What look like to be the uh, bodies of more of those royal soldiers, who have kind of been covered by ash. And this is our first look at kind of the most common enemy type of the DLC, that these kind of brass armored dudes with axes or swords, or I think there's even a halberd variant. Um, they're not particularly hard, they they hit pretty hard, especially the, uh, actually all of them do. They can do a lot of damage to you, um, but they don't seem to have a lot of health, and they seem, they don't seem to be resistant. I think they're fairly resistant to fire damage, actually. But yeah, as you can see here, we take them out fairly easily with two hits of our Watcher's Greatsword. And um, those little kind of buried soldiers, you can actually walk over them and they break and some of them have items, which is quite nice. Oh, one other thing um, that I thought of when I first came into this area was uh, Pompeii. Uh, just like all the ashen bodies everywhere, like a volcano had gone off and everyone had just been, you know, covered in lava, which I thought was really cool. And um, a recurring uh, theme throughout this DLC is that uh, as you're walking, especially if it looks like there's an item, uh, those, I don't know what they are, brass soldier dudes will often ambush you. So uh, you've got to be kind of careful if you're hunting for items out in kind of the ash-covered areas, because they like to hide down there. Oh, we've got an item down there. Oh, we've got an item back here too. Black weed balm. And in there is actually um, kind of another area of the DLC, which we'll get to later. A fair bit later, actually. They give you a lot of items, that's for sure. Not much of it's really useful thus far. I can't remember if I picked up the dexterity ring or not. I don't think I did. <laughs> Almost missed the chest there. Not a mimic. Good to know. What do we got? Titanite slab. We don't need any more of those, but eh, that's all right. Titanite slabs are actually—they throw them at you in this game. In Dark Souls One, there was only like—you could only ever get, I think, two Titanite slabs like per playthrough. 
in this one you can farm them like so easily. And we have another one of those Ashen Idols, and this is actually um, a really nasty ambush. Because uh, it can actually power up. Uh, those Ashen Idols can, I think they do a variety of things. Some of them power up the dudes around you and cover them with kind of uh, ash so that they have a very, uh, very much increased defense. Or they cast that, um, that kind of dark firestorm pyromancy spell if you get too close to them. So they're nasty. Uh, you should always try to take them out first. And as you can see there, I got killed. I got ganked by all those uh, brass warriors. Ah, here is when I pick up the dexterity ring. Yeah, just behind the throne. Got the dexterity ring, which pretty much does uh, exactly what you think it would. Increases your dexterity by five points. Kind of a meh ring. Um, there's better rings you can use, let's put it that way. Rather than just get a straight stat boost, have something like, you know, stamina regeneration or extra spell swaps or whatever. So there we go. To save you having to watch me trek back, I've just edited it out. And now I'm going to try and use uh, ranged attacks to take out these guys before the uh, kind of the power up. The, that Ashen Idol can use its power up so that they don't become too hard to kill. There we go. I love the Watcher and Defender Greatswords, man. They're just so useful. You don't have to worry about carrying a, uh, a spell like uh, Sunlight Blade or Crystal Magic Weapon because they can. Uh, they have like a special move where they can buff themselves, which is great. At the cost of durability, of course. Um, whenever you come across these Ashen Idols, I'd recommend just running for them and destroying them. Because um, they don't respawn, you can get it out of the way, they don't have time to do any shenanigans. And when you go into the animation of uh, destroying them, you have like ridiculously high defense. You can still take a bit of damage, but like not much at all. And so then you can destroy them, um, then you know, roll out try and run away from the enemies that will have mobbed you and then, um, you know, you can take them out without them being powered up with that really annoying uh, kind of ashen armor. And we get a pyromancy, which was created by um, Aegil. I won't really go into it too much because I know Spy and Vardy do, but uh, Aegil was like the guy who made that giant bull idol in um, the Iron Keep. He does stuff with pyromancies. <laughs> That's Eagle's thing. Oh, um, yeah, I have blue flames with this character as well. More for PvP. Um, they do decent damage and they're fast, which is great, and uh, I've uh, specced my character out to dual wield them. It's more for casting stuff like, you know, Soul Greatsword and... Uh, oh god, what is it? Um, Homing Crystal Soul Mass. Because uh, they have a fairly slow casting speed, and what with the nerf to um, Soul Spear, how it takes like forever to cast now, you can't just spam it. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend using that spell with a uh, a blue flame. At least not uh, if timing is of the essence, and you need to get that spell off quickly. And here we go, we're outside again. You can actually go down there and come back up. It, there was just a little ledge and I thought, oh, maybe if I go down I won't be able to get back up, but you can. <laughs> I don't do it on camera, but trust me, you can. And there's a hidden door down below that ledge. Uh, it doesn't really have anything good in it, though. And here we meet uh, these funky little guys. They're, um, they're basically hollow dudes that carry barrels and they can explode and they walk into fire and they're just kind of goofy. Wait, do I go down there? Yeah, see, I noticed the little ledge. Oh, I do go down here. Oh, great. I don't think I activate the door, though. But yeah, right there. It's like super obvious that it's a hidden door. But there's nothing particularly good. And these guys only drop battle axes, which sucks. I mean, they have these really awesome weapons, or awesome looking weapons, and they only drop like a regular battle axe. There you go. Charcoal pine resin. They drop that too. What's this? Lloyd Talismans. As far as I know, there are no mimics in this DLC, so I don't know why. And even in the last DLC, so I don't know why they keep throwing Lloyd Talismans at you. Maybe to make you freak out and try to hit every chest, just in case it's a mimic? I don't know. I think um, an elevator actually comes through here, but we won't activate it till a fair bit later. Moving on. I guess... um. Once you kind of get further down the tower, 
uh, it, the DLC becomes a bit more linear and there's not so much kind of side tracking, which I like because I always get <laughs> a little bit oh, stressed out is the wrong word, but you know, I don't like uh, missing things when I go through a uh, Souls game because usually there's good items and they reward you for exploring. Yeah, these guys um, aren't really aggressive, but uh, like they, as far as I know, they won't attack you. But uh, you got to be careful of the explosive barrels. And here I'm, I'm kind of thinking, how do I react to this? Them kind of blowing up like that. Here we go, searching for the right emote. Mock. Uh. Oh well. And. Um, this is kind of another and slightly annoying thing. There's all these barrels placed around the DLC. Uh, there are like uh, breakable walls, but they're not really in the places you'd think. So I'm sure most people going through here did exactly what I'm doing, throwing firebombs at every pile of barrels. Uh, yeah, most of them have nothing behind them. Only some do. So it can be a bit frustrating. But it does reward you for experimentation, so hey. There you go, down here. Oh, one thing I did kind of like with this DLC is that um, they seem to have increased the distance between bonfires, which is something I was kind of eh about with the base game. It seems like they threw bonfires at you, like Dark Souls 1, finding a bonfire was like a massive thing. And a lot of areas only had one or two bonfires, so it was um, they were like really valuable. Um, finding a bonfire was a huge deal, because you could rest and heal up, but in this, in Dark Souls 2, it's like, they, it's like oh, you know, Walk five minutes, oh, there's another bonfire. Walk another five minutes, oh, there's another bonfire. Like, bonfire placement, I guess. I don't feel was as good in the base game of Dark Souls 2. But in the DLCs, they seem to have spaced them out a bit more. And here we get a Possessed Armor Sword, which is kind of meh. I think it does a little bit of fire damage, maybe bleed. I don't think I looked at it too closely, but it seems kind of eh. In general, the weapons from this DLC are kind of eh. There's a couple of notable exceptions, but overall, there's nothing really amazing. There we go. Um, as I'm sure you've noticed, it basically uh, takes the same amount of hits from uh, dual wielding ju uh, blue flames as it does using our Watcher Greatsword. I was just experimenting with uh, what I can use to kill enemies the fastest. And here I think I just go back to the Watcher Greatsword since we can use a shield and it, you know, still takes two hits to kill an enemy. And uh, we get a bit more of a varied moveset. And that guy's annoying, he throws fire bombs at you. And they can stagger you, so that guy can hit you with his axe and you can almost die. Now... I'm trying to be careful here because I don't want to accidentally destroy this chest in case there's something good. Not to mimic. And it's a uh, Caestus plus A, which is actually okay. I've kind of been experimenting with, um, because Caestus is, I think, they, they're ridiculously light, like they weigh 0 0.5 and they scale really well with um, strength and dex. So um, they can be really useful for surprising opponents in PvP, like you uh, have your main weapon, and then um, if you quickly switch it out for, especially if it's a slow weapon, you can quickly switch it out for a Caestus, and then... Um, like punch them in the face to finish them off and they'll never see it coming and it's great. But anyway, there's uh, the next bonfire. Not too difficult to get to. So far the DLC is not especially challenging except for uh, that ambush where we died. But um, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.